and welcome to another episode of Creature Features from the Museum of York County. My name is Adam Davis, one of our interpreters and educators, and this week we know that Thanksgiving may not be the same like it usually is this year, but there's one thing that a lot of families just aren't going to be able to let go of. I know mine isn't. The food. It's a good time of year for a big meal and a cold day to sleep it off, and humans are far from the only animals to feel that way. The animal we're going to talk about today is not the one on most people's plates and minds. Instead, we're going to be talking about an animal that shares our ideas for the big meal and the big sleep. They're synonymous with the word hibernate. And the way they eat puts Uncle Bob getting fists at the buffet table to shame. If you've ever been to our naturalist center, these are probably some of the first figures you gravitated towards. And it's no wonder. Bears are some of the largest animals in North America. Brown bears and grizzlies can top out at about 800 pounds. Black bears, like the kind we have living in the mountains around the Piedmont, tend to top out at about 600. And we occasionally see them here in the Piedmont from time to time. Both brown and black bears hibernate. But what exactly does that mean? Hibernation is more than just a deep, deep sleep. When an animal hibernates, their metabolism goes way, way down, which means they're using much less energy. Their breathing rate, their heart rate, their body temperature all go way down. It helps them conserve all the energy they've gotten throughout the preceding months. Some animals will be hibernating so deeply, they end up recycling everything so they don't have to get up in the middle of the winter to go to the bathroom. It wasn't clear until recently if black bears truly went into hibernation every year, but a recent study confirmed that they absolutely do. But sometimes they may get up. A hibernating animal can stay in that state usually for about four to six months, and the exact length for bears depends on where that bear lives. How do they prepare for hibernation for that long? They eat a lot. As with other animals we talked about on this show, you can learn a lot about what and how an animal eats by looking at its teeth and the other tools at their disposal. Let's take a look at this brown bear skull. All right, we can see those sharp teeth in the front. So that tells us right away that meat is somewhere on the menu. Fish are always a treat for bears. But our local black bear's prey is mostly invertebrates, mostly insects and their larvae. So we have those sharp teeth in the front, but we always want to look at all the details that we can. Look at these back teeth. They're a lot flatter, right? Use your tongue and feel, your, feel the teeth in the back of your mouth. They feel flat too, right? Both humans and bears have different types of teeth for different types of food. We're both omnivores. Meat, plants, whatever comes along, a bear can probably eat it. In fact, with those flat teeth, a vast majority of a bear's diet is going to be vegetation, ranging from roots, tubers, and fungi to fruit and nuts. So a bear's teeth tell us a lot, but let's take a look at their claws. This is what we call a cast of a black bear's footprint. It's a rubber copy of what the black bear's foot looks like. And we can see their claws right there. They're short, they're curved, and they're sharp. They're great for climbing the trees that we have in the Appalachian Mountains and the Rockies. The bears love to climb. They'll go up there to go after beehives or fruits or nuts high up in the tree branches. But then we have the brown bear's paw. It's definitely a little bit more intimidating, and I can't blame people for being a little bit scared on sight, but let's think about why they look that way. Those long claws are perfect for pinning fish to the ground and scooping them out of the water, and they're even better for digging up roots and digging up grubs and burrows for the grizzly or the brown bear to eat. So that's how they help get the energy they need to last through hibernation, but it's more than that that helps keep the bears comfy through the winter. If we look at this black bear's fur, we can see how dense and thick it is. It actually has two different kinds of hair 
blending together and growing in layers to help keep the bears safe and especially warm. There's a thick, dense undercoat real close to the skin that helps, helps repel water and keeps the bear's skin dry and warmer. And then this rough, coarse, longer outer coat helps guard against burrs, thorns, rough bark, and even some kinds of insects. Despite the name, black bears actually come in a lot of different colors, depending on where the bear is from. They can range in different shades of brown, black, and even white in some areas of Nova Scotia. Looking at the size and build of a bear is much more effective for identifying them than just looking at the color straight away. Some people might be surprised at just how smart and resourceful bears can be. When I was in the mountains last, where I stayed had a big metal cage over the trash cans to keep the bears away. They have a good sense of smell and they realize we eat a lot of the same things. They like a lot of the same things we do, but it's not gonna be very good for them. So it's just safer to keep the trash can sealed and try and, dis try and dissuade the bears from wanting to go rooting around in it. That way, the bears will be more inclined to go for safer, healthier meals out in the woods where their natural diet is. And we can stay safe and sound and well-fed in our own habitats inside. And that's it for this week's Creature Feature. We hope you tune in next time. And from the Museum of York County, thanks for watching.